we're at the National Forensic Academy. Earlier we discussed the proper steps to capture a shoe wear impression photographically. The next step in c capturing a shoe wear impression is to cast the impression. There are numerous types of materials that are available for casting imp impressions. One of the primary used is dental stone. It's a product that dentists use to cast impressions of teeth. There are also a, a number of other um, manufacturers that manufacture simil similar products specifically for forensic uses. The next thing that we will need is a fence. A fence can either be a commercially bought one or one that you make yourself. Its limited purpose is, is to contain the material once we pour it into the cast. The next item that we'll need will be some type of paint stick, wooden spoon, or something of the like. What we will use this for is when we pour our casting material into the cast, we will hold this just above the cast. So as the material goes down, this slows the velocity of the material, keeping it from damaging the substrate and the impression, thereby losing information. This will help us prevent that. And lastly, it's always good to have some type of container that you can transport water in. It's not always readily available depending upon the location you're at. These are best to fill up before you go somewhere that you think that you're going to need the water. The last thing that we need to make sure that we have is some way of marking the cast. There are numerous ways to do that. One is to write directly on the cast. Once it begins to set, you can write right on it with a permanent marker. Or, while the cast is still wet, you can bend the corner of an index card, stick that down into the wet material, and then it gives you a really nice surface to write on. The first thing that we need to do is, is put our fence into place. When we put our fence into place, what we do not want to do is shove the fence into the material. If I shove this fence down into the material, I take the chance of disturbing the impression by causing cracks and other things in it. So what I want to do is, is I want to set my fence gently on top of where we're going to make our impression. Rather than pushing it down in to make sure there's a good seal to contain the material, it's a much better idea to have sand or whatever your substrate is available so that we can build up the edges around the impression rather than take the chance on damaging the impression. Once we have our fence in place, the next stage is to begin mixing our material. Most people that do this type of work will contain their material in some type of a plastic bag, Ziploc bags. I also recommend that you double bag in order to keep this from leaking in your vehicle as it makes a very large mess when it does. When we mix this, we want to make sure that we are prepared, everything is set, because this contains a material that causes an exothermic reaction. And what that means is this will begin to heat itself and set itself very quickly. So be prepared to pour this when you start mixing. Have everything else set and ready to go. When we mix it, we want to mix this to the consistency of a thin pancake batter. As you're kneading this, it is important to make sure you leave the top of the bag open because if you do not, you can run the risk of causing pressure through the kneading process and rupturing the bag. The next step is to pour. If you have someone hold the stick over top of the impression, it will lower the velocity of the material as it goes into the impression. Pour slowly and move the stick over as you pour. Try to get an initial layer down first to, ask to fill in the impression to protect it with the stick. And then you can go back with any remaining material continue to pour and fill in. Any of this extra material that you pour in to fill in will actually reinforce and strengthen your cast, so use whatever you have. If you've poured the bottom layer relatively thin, it's always a good idea to max, possibly mix a second bag to reinforce it and go ahead and dump that in on top of this so that it will be structurally sound. Once you have all the material dumped into the cast, 
you have to wait um, approximately 15, 20, 15 to 20 minutes under normal conditions uh, for this to harden. When it's cooler, um, it will harden a little bit slower, and when it's warmer, it will harden a little bit faster. Once you have it all in, it all looks good, then you can smooth out and tap down uh, the impression just a little bit. If you make sure that it's all consistent, you can also smooth out a spot on the top in which you can write um, the information that we'll put on there before we lift the cast. The other thing that you could do at this juncture, this would be the time while the top is still, um, still not completely set. This would be the time to put your index card into the material. Just bend the end of the index card, stick it into the material. and let it set there. Once your cast is fully set, you can feel it feels almost like a ceramic surface then. You can remove your fence. This is particularly important when you have a um, cast that has filled the entire fence. It's much easier to remove the fence before you lift the uh, cast. When you lift the cast, it's best to lift it a little bit from all the edges, loosen it, and then pull it up all at once. As we discussed earlier in the Knowles portion, we do not want to remove this material from the bottom. That can be very important to the examiner. This needs to be transported to some secure facility and dried. When we made this cast, we added a lot of water to it. If we immediately package it into a box, that water will come out as it dries and break down the integrity of that box, thereby potentially harming the integrity of your evidence or having it fall out of the package. So it's best to let this dry first, then package it appropriately in a paper box and zip tie it down to keep it from moving. Now, like we said, we do not want to clean these casts, but in the end, this is one that we did earlier, this is the quality of the cast that you will end up with. This is ultimately what the examiner will see uh, when they do their comparison.